Hello dodgy humans, welcome back to the channel and to today's video where we're going to unpack cryoglobulins and rheumatoid factor for the exam win. Oh, 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 can I do this one? Can I do this one? I don't see why not. <laughs> See you in there. We will be bringing clarity to two questions. One, what on earth is a cryoglobulin? And two, what on earth is rheumatoid factor? These concepts make great exam questions, and I'm going to teach it to you in a way that will make sure that you actually remember it for when you see that pesky MCQ in your exams. And if you are studying for your exams, I have some free goodies for you. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our free GN tutorial inside the 7 Day Kickstart Challenge over on our website. This is the cheat code for learning all of Glomerular Fridays, all of GN. You'll summarise it on one page. You'll do it in 40 minutes. It's an absolute blast and I want you to have it. I'll leave a link to that below. All you need to understand cryoglobulinemia and rheumatoid factor is the difference between IgG and IgM antibodies and the meaning of the terms polyclonal and monoclonal. And that basically sets you up for conquering cryoglobulins. So let's touch on these first. So you may remember that IgM is the first on the scene antibody produced directly by B cells. And IgM is a big antibody. It's this big pentamer structure. And so it has lots of binding sites which will stick to a particular antigen imperfectly. But being first on the scene, the immune system wasn't aiming for perfect in these binding sites. It just throws IgM out there to tackle the infection best it can, whilst it works on creating that better, more specific antigen binding site, usually in the form of IgG antibodies. Now, the process of how these antibodies are tried and tested against the antigen and decided upon has been covered in earlier episodes of this series. But needless to say that once the best binding site has been selected, the B cell will differentiate into plasma cells and plasma cells are antibody factories. These plasma cells will go to the bone marrow and generate the same IgG antibody again and again and again and again until the plasma cell dies off. And these IgG antibodies look like this, with their little hands or binding sites and their little feet, the FC portion which interacts with the immune system. So IgM is a big clumsy antibody made initially by B cells and IgG is more sophisticated and comes later from plasma cells. So that's IgM and IgG sorted. Now we need to understand the difference between monoclonal and polyclonal immune responses. So first of all, polyclonal. This is basically the normal immune response. When our body comes into contact with a pathogen, that pathogen will have lots of different antigens on the surface. So we'll have lots of different B cells recognizing lots of different antigens on the surface of the microbe. And these B cells will generate antibodies towards these various antigens. So the normal immune response is polyclonal, making lots of different antibodies to lots of different antigens all at once. But monoclonal, on the other hand, is not normal at all. This is when there is a rogue B cell or plasma cell that has cloned itself into a population of cells that are just chucking out the same antibody again and again and again and this usually represents some hematological havoc such as MGUS or myeloma. Okay, so we got IgM, IgG, monoclonal and polyclonal sorted. Now let's see these concepts in action as we conquer cryoglobulinemia. So first of all, what on earth is a cryoglobulin? Ultimately, the clue is in the name, cryoglobulin. Cryo is a word we associate with cold situations. Think cryopreservation or cryotherapy. These are very, very cold. And globulin, of course, tells us that we are dealing with a protein such as an immunoglobulin. And the definition of a cryoglobulin is a protein which precipitates at temperatures less than 37 degrees Celsius. And it's important to understand that this definition is referring to the behaviour of cryoglobulins outside the body in the lab. And their activity inside the body in vivo is not necessarily related to temperature 
at all and usually has a lot more to do with immune complex formation. But because of this laboratory definition of cryoglobulins precipitating at temperatures less than 37 degrees Celsius, it means that in order to detect the presence of cryoglobulins, we must perform the blood test in a very specific way, keeping the blood warm as we remove it from the body and transfer it to the lab. And then, when it gets to the lab, that's when we will subject the sample to temperatures less than 37 degrees Celsius and see if it precipitates. Okay, so that's what a cryoglobulin actually is, but how might this show up in clinical practice? As I mentioned before, what makes cryoglobulins problematic in the body has very little to do with temperature and a lot more to do with immune complex formation. Cryoglobulins can show up in clinical practice as vasculitis, which can lead to neuropathy, glomerulonephritis, skin manifestations with that classic purpuric rash. This is the typical description of cryoglobulinemic vasculitis that you'll see in your exams. And cryoglobulins can also result in hyperviscosity syndromes, especially when they are due to an underlying hematological malignancy. But these clinical aspects of cryoglobulinemia are pretty easy to learn from the literature. And so what I want to do today is to help you to understand the three classifications of cryoglobulinemia, which, let's face it, are far less easy to learn from the literature. Okay, so in clinical practice, we tend to divide cryoglobulins into three different types. Type 1, type 2, and type 3. And don't worry, this is so easy now that you've got the basics. Stay with me. And to help cement this in our memories, we're also going to recruit the help of some specialists. A haematologist, a rheumatologist, and an infectious disease physician. Let's start with type 1. Type 1 includes monoclonal antibodies. So it's a solo, singular kind of vibe. And that helps us to remember type 1 is monoclonal, singular, solo. And we now know that monoclonal antibodies mean hematological misbehaviour. There's a clonal population of cells producing the same antibody over and over and over and over for no reason at all, except hematological havoc. So. This type of cryoglobulin shall be allocated to the haematology specialist to review. Now, what about type 2 and 3? These are not singular. These are mixed. And both of these include a polyclonal response. So there's more than one antibody to more than one target antigen. And now we know that when we have a polyclonal response, the immune system is doing one of two things. It's either trying to battle an infection or there's an autoimmune condition at play. So here the immune system is just doing its thing. It's trying its best with the antigens that it perceives as foreign and it continues to come across because the infection's not going away and neither is the connective tissue disease. So here, depending on the underlying pathology, autoimmune or infection, you might need a rheumatologist or you might need an ID physician. And sometimes you need both. Both type 2 and type 3 cryoglobulinemia are commonly associated with hepatitis C infection, but can also occur with many other chronic infections. And they can both be associated with a variety of connective tissue diseases. So how do you tell them apart? The key difference here is that type 2 cryoglobulinemia includes rheumatoid factor, and type 3 does not. That's it. That's the difference between these two things. And that brings us to our last question. What on earth is rheumatoid factor? Now, you might think that rheumatoid factor is something to do with rheumatoid arthritis. And for sure, you can see it in rheumatoid arthritis. But rheumatoid factor can also be seen in healthy people from time to time. And of course, it can be seen in this cryoglobulin situation we are discussing today. Rheumatoid factor means there is a monoclonal IgM antibody directed against the FC portion of IgG. So, an IgM was made by a B cell again and again and again and again, and it is directed against the FC portion of IgG. And remember, the FC portion is the little feet of the antibody the part that interacts with the immune system. And remember, this FC portion, or the feet of the IgG, will be the same 
in every single IgG antibody. This is not the unique part of the antibody. This is the stock standard part of any IgG antibody. So what we're basically saying is we have an antibody against the feet of any and every IgG antibody that this person makes. The plot thickens. And so if we are making lots of IgG because we have a chronic infection or autoimmune disease, we have lots of antibodies around. And if we have rheumatoid factor in the mix, we now have an antibody against all of these antibodies. And so now we have lots of antibodies against antibodies. You see where I'm going with this. So that's type two cryoglobulinemia in a nutshell. Lots of IgG because of a connective tissue disease or a chronic infection plus rheumatoid factor an IgM against those IgGs. And we contrast this with type 3 cryoglobulinemia, where yes, we have heaps of antibodies around due to an infection or autoimmune disease, but there's no rheumatoid factor. In type 3, rheumatoid factor is not a feature. So just to recap those different types of cryoglobulinemia, type 1, monoclonal, we need a hematologist always. Type 2 and 3, polyclonal, both due to a chronic stimulation of the immune system, either a chronic infection or autoimmune disease. Type 2 is the one with rheumatoid factor, which is a monoclonal IgM against the FC portion or the feet of the IgG. Type 3, polyclonal, but no rheumatoid factor. And for type two and three, depending on the underlying cause, we might need an ID physician, a rheumatologist, or both. But the truth is, in someone with type two cryoglobulinemia, we might also need a hematologist from time to time. Because remember this rheumatoid factor or IgM is monoclonal. It's coming from a B cell population that's slightly unhinged and is being stimulated by the infection or autoimmune disease on a continuous basis. And sometimes, if the autoimmune condition or infection are treated, the cryoglobulins, including rheumatoid factor, just disappear. But in other cases, they don't, and some of these patients can develop lymphoma. So this is when the B cell population that was making the IgM has taken on a life of its own and continues to proliferate and make that monoclonal antibody despite that trigger being removed. And this is why there is an associated risk of patients with hepatitis C or connective tissue disease developing lymphoma. So basically, hematologists can be our friends in all of these cryoglobulin situations. So that was cryoglobulins and rheumatoid factor for exams and Dr. Life. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this helped your studies. And if you are studying for your exams, you're going to want to be in my world. Hit that subscribe button. And we have lots of free goodies for you. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the free GN tutorial. The links are below. And we also have a transplant webinar. Again, the links are below. I just love you guys. And I want to make sure I give you so much value throughout this season. And if you are enjoying our learning style, you are going to love the Reno for the written program. This is not like any other BPT course. It is nothing like the college lectures. It is a super fun program designed to equip you with everything you need to know about renal for your exams. We take complex topics and make them super simple. There's MCQs everywhere, over 250 MCQs, as well as the on-demand materials that you can work through at your own pace that are designed to be super fun. They're designed to be consumed after a busy day of work um, and make you feel really good whilst doing them and leave you with a feeling of accomplishment. But on top of that, we also have whiteboard tutorials with me where we unpack topics in whiteboard style. The learning unfolds in this super magical way and it's just an absolute blast. So if you want to love learning again, come and join me for the Reno for the Written program. I would love to see you there um, and I'll leave a link to that below. So um, with that, I hope to see you again soon for some more higher learning. Bye!